Yeah, certainly it is making the news uh, all over Europe and including in uh, Norway. No, we're certainly observing, but uh, like in the Scottish case, we are not uh, commenting on the uh, issues at stake. I think the, the baseline for mediation is that uh, the two or more parties involved in a situation have to accept it uh, and invite it. And um, unless that is the case, there's no reason for a third party to have uh, aspirations of that kind. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am confident on the part of uh, Spanish politics that uh, you have democratic processes and procedures that uh, will be able to deal with this issue. Mm -hmm. And which uh, could be good news uh, if the Spanish government is not uh, to allow the referendum or independent separate decision on this? Well, the beauty of national democracy is that it is for nationals of the country concerned to uh, discuss and uh, resolve issues, and it's not for outsiders to uh, have any opinions on the way forward. Well, I think any uh, situations of fragmentation would be um, demanding for international organizations, not only NATO, for the UN, etc. But there are procedures for handling such issues if, if and when they arise. Mm -hmm. And how would that work? Would they, they be inside and have to apply? Well, I think the, the, the then uh, president of the European Commission, Mr. Barroso, uh, on the matter of Scotland, uh, said very clearly that... Uh, uh, Scotland would not automatically become a member of the European Union if they seceded from um, the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom would still be a member, Scotland would, would not. Um, but it would be up to the Scottish people to, uh, to determine. That was his uh, message. Um, and um, there are processes like when uh, the countries of the Balkans split up. Uh, Serbia inherited the Yugoslav seat in the United Nations, but the other countries applied and were um, accepted as members. Mm -hmm. So there wouldn't be Catalonia splitting up? Well, I think uh, Barroso felt that he was uh, misrepresented by say, talking about expulsion, but uh, it is simply um, normal that uh, if a country, like I mentioned the Balkans, um, one country in the Balkans, Yugoslavia, uh, now, um, one country, namely Serbia, mm -hmm. inherited Yugoslavia's position in the global system and the European system. The other countries had to, uh, the other new countries, had to apply for membership, like in the United Nations. Uh, and that's where I'm saying there are procedures for this, um, but but um, only one country will keep the privileges of um, um, of the the country that split up. And Yugoslavia is, is uh, an important case to study in this regard. Well, I assume any country in Europe, would, uh, new or old, would uh, want to uh, ensure as much security as possible. But it would, uh, again, be a hypothetical uh, issue. And uh, it's not possible in advance to say exactly what would happen. But international organizations have ways of um, resolving such issues. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but in the event of such situations, the, uh, the international community has precedences that you can build on. When I mention Yugo Yugoslavia, it's obviously that was a conflict, and I'm not, I'm not relating that to, to your question. Uh, but in terms of international law and international procedures, the Yugoslavia case is, uh, is an instructive one. I think all these issues are uh, impossible to uh, to give an answer to until you have a new situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and how would Norway react to, to that situation? Well, we would play along with international rules and with what happens. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure Norway is too different from other European countries. We have had two referenda. Uh, both have ended with a fairly narrow majority against joining. Uh, in some European Union member states, you have had referendums on um, the Maastricht Treaty, uh, the Lisbon Treaty, and uh, occasionally you've seen a slim majority voting no. Um, so, on the basis that um, Norway, through a referendum, is not a member, we um, are dealing with this through actually participating deeply in European integration. We have, and we had even before our last referendum, 
we had the European Economic Area Agreement, which makes Norway part of the single market. Um, effectively, this means that three quarters of EU legislation is imported to Norway, more or less unchanged, uh, enabling us to play by the same rules uh, in single market terms as the European Union member states. Similarly, we're part of Schengen. Um, these days, of course, Schengen and Dublin being much debated, uh, we are much integrated or fully integrated uh, with that process. And we have a range of other uh, agreements with the European Union. Plus, we're participating in different programs, uh, Erasmus, Horizon 2020. Um, so effectively, we are uh, deeply integrated, uh, but uh, what we're lacking, of course, is the right to vote.